Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. My home city. That's right. As are we excited to have you. We're going to hear three songs today. One of them is from Rivers Run Dry, which pre-congratulations to you because it's coming out in the spring of 2020 on Rock Nation. Um, We're going to hear a song that is out in the world right now, but a special stripped down rendition of it. And then we will have a cover as well. Can you tell us what's uh, what's happening first? So first, I wanted to start with um, the title track off the EP that's coming out called Rivers Run Dry. And the video um, is also out with it and they kind of go together. So if you guys like the song, check out the video. And um, this is Rivers Run Dry. audience thank so. you harlow that sounds great thanks for coming and thank doing you. this thank you so much for having me yeah of course um can you talk to us a little bit about the uh your origin like how do you find yourself here and and specifically uh so i know you've done a lot of songwriting a lot of producing yeah. but what makes this collection of songs that's that will end up on rivers run dry right as a uh to release it this way as opposed to writing these yeah. tunes for somebody else I, um, it's a great question. I, yeah, I started as a kid, I started playing piano and I always loved writing songs and I always knew that that was like the kind of glue for me and and like, like music and storytelling were so put together. Um, and I was signed and dropped and from New York, moved to LA, you know, um, thought that I had, I, and I, I always wanted to tell a story, but I kind of realized that 
like they say, timing is everything. And it wasn't the right time. And it took me writing with other artists. And I've had the privilege of writing for and with such talented, incredible artists of so many different genres. I mean, it kind of all sort of felt soulful to me because that's, I guess, my my favorite genre. But um, I kind of picked, I through that journey of songwriting, it sort of led me to realizing my own story, the, my own true story. And of course, like experiences, and I went through a really kind of big love and heartbreak and that whole thing that they talk about. It's real and it makes you want to write. And um, I was in London writing for another artist and collaborated with this awesome, amazing producer named Fred Ball um, this year, earlier this year. And we just hit it off and we did this body of work, like these five or six songs that felt like this new little like vortex of a place that I hadn't really tapped into before that all felt like one story from beginning to end and like just short and sweet. Mm. And that's when I was like, okay, this feels right. And I'm ready to explore this now. And it's led me to like opening up my laptop and being like, Oh, that, okay. I want that. I want to say that net. I want to put that out next. And that, you know, it, it started this whole kind of snowball thing, these five songs. So, Well, that's awesome. I mean, congratulations. I'm glad that you found that outlet. Not everybody does ever find that outlet and that, that, uh, uh, it's fun. Creativity. I'm stoked that you did. And thanks for sharing it with us. We appreciate it very much. Um, and we are, we've got two more songs coming up. You're going to do one yes. that is out in the world right now, right? What's coming up second? Out, uh, now, uh, with Robin Schultz, who's in, amazing DJ and he put it out and I wanted to play an acoustic version for you guys called all this love. And it's basically saying, and this was, I just want to say this one thing was like, came to the studio and after this relationship that I loved so much ended, I came into the studio and I said to collaborator Stuart Crichton, I said, and we work together all the time and he knows me. I'm kind of all over the place in my head. Like, oh, I want to say this. I want to blah, 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 blah. all these thoughts. And I said that day I came in, I said, so what the fuck happened? So what do I, we're done. I get that. But what do I do with all this love? As if like this love is like a separate entity. Like I know we're done. So what do I do with this love? Do I box it away? Do I store it somewhere? Like what do I do with that? So. Space would up a seat. Now I see it on the bed, and I close my eyes. Think about those perfect nights in Phoenix. I still feel us, but there's no relief. It's weighing on me, it's taking its toll. It's no letting go. We're damned if we do, and we're damned if we don't stay.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, that sounds <laughs> outstanding. Thank you for the. Have you, have you done it that way ever before? I. Or this publicly? is like a new. It's. It was written that way, um, but this is kind of a new take on it to bring that out into the universe like that. So thank you for letting me do that. Totally. Thanks for doing it here. Um, can we continue the conversation that we were having offline when you came yes. here? I mean, all these tapes back out. here, including Aretha Franklin, including Ella Fitzgerald, including, you know, Ray Charles. This is rock and roll history or every type of music history going back to 1953 is the oldest tape here. Um, can we talk more about some of, of your heroes and who's been important to you throughout life and throughout your career? It would be fun if I, if I, if I would take, I would take all day and like look through all these and I'm sure all my heroes are, are like in these tapes, but I, like we were talking about, um, I just love like we were you were pulling up some old school Prince stuff and to me that's like uh, probably hands down one of my favorite artists in terms I mean vocally too but like and then I have my favorites of like Aretha um I love Whitney I didn't ask you if you had any Whitney. I'd be curious. We do. And actually, the dude that played the, um, I don't know how much Whitney, how much he worked with her, but Kirk Whalem is the name of a sax player who played on I Will Always Love You on that oh, iconic yeah. solo. He was here the other day, um, and I, th I would assume he played with uh, with her quite a bit. But yes, for a fact, there is some Whitney in this archive. Okay, so hands down, everything, I could probably go through this, and these are my heroes, this wall. If you um, don't have meetings right after this, you're welcome to stick around. We're here all day. <laughs> I I will like definitely take you up on that. I leave tomorrow to LA, so we'll have to figure this out. Crunch time, but um, yeah, uh, Whitney. I mean, I loved Mariah Carey growing up. Um, Prince. I mean, and then kind of you know then it, then I start. I really got into like the '90s R and B, Boys to Men, um, Luther. Like I just kind of. It un I started loving more and more and more and going down the rabbit hole, finding all the all the kind of old school soul we were talking about. Um, I mean, so many artists. Yeah, I. It, yes, I love all those artists. So. Nice, nice. <laughs> and well, yeah, that, that is a sincere offer. You're welcome to hang and geek out over James tapes Brown. for absolutely as long as you want. You and go. so that awesome. leads us into what's happening next, right? You've got a cover coming up who is from One an artist who's very, very well represented in this archive as well. Yeah, Bonnie Raitt is like, in this particular song, what, got, what made me in love with this song, aside from her version, which I feel like nobody can... Do it quite like her. You can tell she just really means what she's saying. But Bonnie Vera did a version, did a cover of I Can't Make You Love Me. And I remember seeing it just like kind of going through YouTube. And this cover had like, I don't know, 75 million views or something like that. Recently, I saw it for a mm -hmm. cover, which is like it says something about it. It's so good, his version. So I kind of pulled pieces from the original and pieces from his and wanted to play my own version for you guys. So... I can't make you 
So much. was great thank you for coming by and doing this and best of luck on rivers run dry it comes out in spring of 2020 on rock nation uh we heard one song from it we heard one uh, that is already out in the world and uh and with that bonnie Raitt cover was outstanding Wait, was that, whose song is did she write that song she or wrote that. I she, mean, that's her song don't quote me on it but okay. i think so i'm the one with the internet right in front of me i should verify <laughs> this i will do that right now um so thank you for all that music it sounded great and tour safely when tour dates are announced your harlow music across all uh socials and so yeah. um we will stay tuned and thank you so much for coming and doing it come back whenever thank you for having me i will be back all right <laughs>